is our tenth. Oh, I always forget about that, right? Recording. Uh, next slide. Just as a reminder, if you've not already done so, please uh, label your Zoom tile, especially if it's labeled like iPad 34701 Galaxy 8. Uh, that's fantastic. And we'll figure out how to get your credit cards later. But we want to know your name. So if you could put uh, your name in that Zoom tile, that would be fantastic. Uh, also, uh, if folks are able, please keep your video on. Uh, I do know that some people uh, were in that, that weird home, work, school, oh my God, kids phase, like on the transition. So if you're in a transition environment and you can't really have the camera on, that's cool. But if you are in a space where you can, we'd really encourage folks to do so, as well as make sure that you keep your line muted uh, during the presentation. Uh, as always, we have our chat room uh, located uh, to the right. If you can't see that, you can use the icons at the lower uh, part of your screen. Click on the button that says chat, uh, and you can introduce yourself in that chat room, as well as communicate with the rest of the participants. Again, when we uh, get to our question and answer session, uh, we ask that folks actively engage uh, and share ideas and best practices uh, with your peers. As a reminder, we do record the didactic session portions of our training. Next slide. So today's agenda, uh, we have our didactic on the language of caring uh, with Dani Chen, uh, who's going to talk to us. It's super cool. I'm gonna let them talk about it. Uh, we have a case presentation from Wanda, who's gonna show us uh, some pretty cool age specific stuff that they were doing in their organization. And then as always, we'll have our brief wrap up. So what I'm gonna do now is pass it over to Dani, uh, who's gonna talk to us about the language of caring. Oh, you're on mute, Dani. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. I'd like to share with you about our implementation of a language of caring program at Sun River Health. Next slide, please. So in late 2020, we administered an organization-wide survey to determine the baseline for Sun River Health's culture of caring. We had a total of 772 responses come in, and it gave us a window into how people felt across the organization. We then stratified the data by direct and indirect caregivers, and we received overall great feedback throughout the survey, and we even set a Plain Tree International record with our 6.44 out of 7 in direct caregiver response to the statement, I feel proud to work here. Next slide, please. One of the themes that we noted was that the lowest scores came from questions regarding appreciation. In particular, our lowest scores of 5.5 out of 7 were regarding the statement, my coworkers let me know that they appreciate me. As you know, we've noticed in this time of COVID, in this, we really want to be appreciative and particularly show that appreciation um, very clearly, even toward our coworkers and ourselves. So it was an area to work on and we decided to apply language of caring. Next slide, please. Language of caring provides our staff with important skills and empathy. And working in person-centered care, we are always looking to mold our organization structure to promote engagement and use evidence to drive improvement. And with communication, it affects multiple outcomes from patient engagement to safety. So in order to support work in other areas, whether it's patient experience initiatives or health outcomes, we must first take a look at our own care practice standards and processes. We can improve clinic performance by making care visible in every interaction. So what comprises the language of caring? It may include the words, tone, and nonverbal behaviors that make one's caring felt by the person on the receiving end. We are looking to create a pervasive culture of caring when everyone speaks this language. Next slide, please. One of the first things we did was establish the value of building our own empathy skills and what implications that could have across our lives from not only our patients and coworkers, but also our families and ourselves. We see this in our trauma-informed care work. We see it in behavioral health. We see it across from all our patients from all walks of life. 
we know that the acknowledgement of the feelings of others are vital to the ultimate health and the healing of the individual. By helping our staff harness the power of empathy, we are also able to build a better foundation of trust with our patients. When we have substance use patients come in, we need to let them know we care. We can't be reading from a script and let them decide we have no interest in their long-term health. We need to convince them otherwise that we are invested in them. The communication of empathy model and that module has provided the tools toward that goal. We ran over 100 sessions of this module, reaching about a thousand staff. Each facilitator ran workshops with the staff and each participant was gifted a handbook and worksheets to practice the heart head heart method that was introduced in their session. And we'll take a quick look at that ourselves. So the heart head heart communication states that there should be two sides to every interaction in order to make it complete and satisfying for the other person. These sides are the head or the heart. Whether you're handling a complaint or concern, responding to a question or giving an explanation, there are two ways to respond from the head or the heart. Now, both heart and head messages are beneficial and necessary. Starting with heart, however, prepares the other person to listen more intently to the head messages and finishing with heart reinforces your caring. Many studies have proven that our patients and our colleagues just hear the information, the facts we're giving them if they we first say something personal or connecting just from the heart. This makes it more effective to say review a treatment plan or caution a patient about side effects. Of course, we do need to include good head statements to educate patients and provide good care. Next slide, please. So here's an example of what's called a heart head heart sandwich. We've taken a situation where a potential patient says, I've read in the paper about problems at this facility. How do I know that you know what you're doing? Maybe I should have this test somewhere else. So there's many ways to handle this type of situation, but the key is focusing on the feeling and connecting first, then moving to actions or information and ending with more empathy. Because what is the impact of all head? The person can be left feeling disrespected. Oh, they don't care about my interests. I'll take my money elsewhere. Or they could feel talked down to, dismissed, judged. We want everyone who walks through the doors of our clinic to feel acknowledged and respected. Now, what is the impact of all heart? These words are empathetic, but they don't address the questions to open up the conversation and learn more so that we can address those concerns and don't leave the person continuing to wonder. Now, what is the impact of a sandwich? We apply empathy, then suggest a conversation. We appreciate this person for approaching us with their concern. And so we make it more likely that they will be more open-minded with us and engage more fully in their care because we are actively demonstrating our caring. Now, other examples may be when your patient is in withdrawal or someone new has come in, and your instinct may be that your clinical experience kicks in and you jump to asking them to describe their symptoms. It could be beneficial to slow down a bit and approach with a heart head heart sandwich. For example, that I'm so sorry you're in pain. Could you please tell me more about that pain? I'd like to make you feel better to really ensure you encompass both sides. Another example might happen in the front desk or the waiting room. It's been a long day, but now there's this man getting angry. We can try getting to the root of his issue to soothe his concerns. For example, sir, I see you're a good son trying to take care of his elderly mother. It has been a frustrating wait for you. Let me go see if I can find out what's going on and get an update. We will take good care of her for you. Next slide, please. This program has been immensely successful, but it could not have happened without our implementation team. They had recruited 16 people to join the effort and invited them to serve as additional facilitators for the Language of Caring program. We all attended an implementation planning meeting and we had a two-day train the trainer facilitator training 
where we had the material initially presented to us by language of caring staff. And then we were given the opportunity to practice the presentation and workshop the materials together. Our team provided more than 100 live sessions for staff with an average audience size of 10, which was a great size for interaction. And the audiences comprised of staff from across our organization from multiple regions. Although we did use the practice of holding specific dates for a site, for example, the staff at Brentwood were prioritized and scheduled all on the same date. Next slide, please. So we held three to five sessions every day, four to five days a week for three months. It was an endeavor, but through these efforts, we were able to reach approximately 50% of all our staff through live sessions alone. And one of the live sessions was recorded and uploaded into our learning management system. The material is available to any staff who's unable to attend and new hires are automatically assigned this recording as part of their onboarding experience. Next slide, please. Now, most staff like this program. They saw a benefit in using it. And with such incredibly positive feedback, both in the post-session evaluations and through staff anecdotes, we decided as an organization to expand the program into a full language of caring module encompassing 11 new 30-minute modules over the next year and a half. Those trainings include for health center directors, managers, directors are on a separate track from providers due to differing needs and circumstance and schedules. And those new modules will also include habit building exercises and the, that will be led by managers and supervisors each week to reinforce the new learnings. Next slide, please. So one of the top tips I can give for implementing this is to listen to the real experiences that people are having at the sites and build on that. That some staff push back and ask, how can they talk to patients who are being hostile? It, what it would be like when you're not able to get through. Now, one of the advice I would give is that it could be likely that the patients would be less likely to get hostile if we all use this approach throughout the clinics and we're able to apply that empathy and language of caring throughout. So some staff were concerned about not sounding genuine, but of course we're not looking for phoniness and over time with practice, each of our staff will find their authentic voice when using their heart messages. So it does not, the heart messages of that sandwich may not come naturally to everyone. I know it certainly did not come naturally to me. I'm more of a head statement person myself. That is what I gear to. But through practice, that's where it comes from. By integrating this to our daily lives, we can transform this method into our habit. You'll find a head message that is natural for your role. If you say, uh, if you, for example, don't run x-rays, you can acknowledge someone's frustrations and say, let's find someone on your care team and let them know what's going on. I know they'll take good care of you. And by including good head statements in our day-to-day -day work and applying empathy in the language of caring, we are better equipped to educate our patients. It is our mission to provide good care. So let's leverage these tools toward that mission to care for our patients. Um, next slide, please. So get ready to start practicing the language of caring and tools like heart head heart with not only the patients, but also your coworkers, your family, your kids, everyone around you. You'll be so impressed by the results. And together we will show that one person can really do so much. In fact, we invite you to share your stories with us. So thank you once again for the opportunity to share my experience with you. I've compiled some links here if you're interested, and please feel free to let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. That was fantastic, Amy. Thank you so much uh, for coming to share that with us. Uh, I don't know about you all, but that was freaking cool. Uh, Norma had some questions uh, in the chat room about, you know, where the survey tool came from. Uh, let me scroll back up. Uh, is it something you can get a copy of? Is this like a, a copyrighted program? Like how might someone access uh, these, these programs for themselves? So off the bat, let me just say, um, 
it unfortunately it is copyrighted i know when we went back and forth about this presentation i i tried and they were like no you have to buy it so i tried to give you an overview of what i could um, but ultimately, Language of Caring is its own company, and you could buy modules from them. And I have linked their information and everything. I highly recommend it. Clearly, our organization has gotten a wealth of value out of that. Thanks so much. Yeah, and when you go to their website, uh, they've got a lovely little scrolling thing of all the other folks uh, who you may take a look at that institutions. Uh, they're just ones that are very reputable. That's all I'm saying. So seems like a good investment, potentially. Uh, any other questions folks have? I see Dawn asked in the question uh, in the chat room, is there a version of this survey that goes to patients or is it all sort of like a staff-based engagement? It's not necessarily staff-based. This is for absolutely anyone and everyone. These are manners of ways to um, interact with others, um, whether it's um, using strategies for connecting with others or um, shifting mindsets. For example, I think we've mentioned uh, reframing. So whether it's when someone approaches you, whether say um, you want to, I don't want to say put yourself in someone's shoes, but basically those are things that anyone can do. It doesn't have to be a staff member. So these are all strategies. And if anything, um, you know, patients are also um, great, great opportunities to benefit from language of caring. Awesome, thanks so much. Yeah, uh, for folks, uh, CQII has been put together. It'll probably come out in the fall, more experience-based co-designs information, which talks about like how difficult to say is this provider or patient? Cause the model is like, everybody does this. It's like how people interact. So we'll talk more about that too. Uh, there was a question from Al. Do you know, uh, Dani, were the modules or the curricula developed uh, with input from patients? Uh, either do you know about Plain Tree or did you all engage patients or consumers in your rollout process? Mm, unfortunately, I won't be able to answer that, but I could ask uh, language of caring staff for you. Cool. Yeah. And, and again, folks, they've got a great website too with a resource library in there with some information you can access. So take a look at that as well. Any other questions or comments folks have? Awesome, well, thank you again uh, so much, Danny. We really appreciate it. I know after this, I'm gonna heart head sandwich uh, my way with others uh, and see if that's a successful approach. So thank wonderful, you. Wonderful, so wonderful. So next up, Wanda, you ready?